ready. All right, here we go. Uh, you probably wonder why I'm not in sweatpants. This is why I'm not in sweatpants, because I have to be here. Um, I almost asked Michael to um, share, let me share my testimony before I, I taught tonight, because um, when I say I'm humbled to stand here before y'all uh, teaching tonight is an understatement. Uh, where I was last year, <clears throat> in fact, that song that was just played, Oh, that just broke me. Perfect timing to break me right before I have to come up here. Um, I don't think I've heard that since uh, April 2nd of last year, but uh, summary of my testimony, and that, that's it right there. I was um, I was lost, shackled in chains, and couldn't breathe. Um, and God, Jesus came and saved me. And um, that's the only testimony you need to know. Um, but tonight, we're going to go through... Um, we're talking about exchanging the world for the kingdom of heaven. Um, the first time I heard Michael teach this, and if you've been around, you've, you've heard Michael teach this, um, or Brent. Got to give you some credit there, too. Um, you know, I, I, I heard it from a legalistic, kind of a judgmental, shaming kind of conversation. Um, and obviously when I heard it for the first time, I wasn't in a place of, of receiving any kind of um, true word from the Lord. Um, but those that I have heard this and heard this from Michael, I would just, you know, you've probably heard it multiple times, but, but open your heart and, and allow God just to kind of look at it from a different light. Um, I almost copied Michael's verbatim just because I knew it was probably easier, but... Um, I tried to throw my own little spin on it, um, but I'm going to start with with what it says in the in the in the book. Um, it's the first couple sentences of of what chapter six says in the in the work and the manual. Um, there are behaviors that the culture says are normal and acceptable, but are contrary to the truth. Some of these behaviors are considered harmless and customary, but are veiled attempts to to have you compromise the truth in order to be influenced by evil. Um, later on, we're going to go through some examples um, of what that might look like. But I wanted to kind of start with, with really what, what we're called to be in Christ, right? We're here in exchange life, and the whole purpose of this is, is to exchange the old life that we lived for a new life that we have in Christ. Um, and so through this, it's a, that's how I wanted to tackle this is, is in a sense of, okay, how, how do we, you know, we've made the decision to make that step and change our life and start down that direction. But how do we practice that? How do we go through the daily life of actually walking this out and, and, and stepping into it? Um, so let's, first I want to go to Romans 6.13. I'm going through a lot of scripture because it's going to help me a lot because it preaches and I don't have to preach. Um, Romans 6, 13 and 14. I'm going to read the ESV and the Passion. I will say this about the Passion. You don't know my testimony. I grew up a preacher's kid, so I heard the Bible over and over and over again. And for me, through, throughout my entire life, I'd hear verses and, and I wasn't in a place that I was able to receive it, right? I, I would just immediately dismiss it or just kind of look, scan it over and just ignore it. The Passion Translation has been huge for me. I literally just got done reading through the entire book of Romans, and I read it all in the Passion. And there was like, uh, it, it was as if it was a brand new whole chapter, whole book for me, because it just it, it just paints a different picture, and and, and uh, it really breaks it down a lot easier for someone like me that's not a nerd like these two guys. Um, so let's do it. Romans 6, 13 and 14. Do not present your members to sin as an instrument of unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, of, and since you are not under law, but under grace. Now let's read in the Passion. So then refuse to answer its call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for his pleasure, ready to be used in his noble purpose. Remember this, sin will not conquer you, for God already has. 
We are not governed by the law, but governed by the reign of the grace of God. I, I mean, you could just end there, but what we're talking about here, again, is, is exchanging. We have been purchased. We've made that decision to allow God to take over our life, to God come to our life. Sin does not have dominion over us anymore. And, and this, when we go through this, the main point of all this is to not allow sin to keep having power in our lives. Because I believe, I'm not a theologian, but I believe that we can make these decisions, but then we can kind of settle back into old thinking, old habits, and sin can come creep back in. And although we are saved by the grace of God, we can allow sin to start running rampant in our lives. But we're called to be different. The world tells us that there's so many things that are acceptable or that are okay or normal. But in reality, like it says here, we are called to be different from the world. Our old life, I'm sorry, our new life should look different than our old life. If you were to, met, if you were to have met me prior to April 2nd of last year, I mean, some of you probably did, but not only meet me, but know who I was, because I because I put on a great front before that. Some people could see through it. Some people could see what the reality was. But if you really knew who I was, it is not the same person standing in front of you right now. There is a total transformation of what happened in here that is now being exposed on the outside. Prior to, there was this front that was that looked like it was held together. But in reality, it wasn't. And that is only because of the grace of our Savior. <clears throat> Romans 13, 13 and 14. We must live honorably, surrounded by the light of the new day, not in the darkness of drunkenness and debauchery, not in being argumentative or jealous of others. Instead, fully immerse yourself into the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, and don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken it's selfish desires. Again, it is calling us to walk upright with the Lord. This is a over and over and over again. You look through, uh, especially the New Testament. It is it, Paul is is pleading. You have a new identity. Don't keep. Don't fall back into the way in which you used to live. You have a no, new identity. Walk upright in that. Stand firm in that. Fight against what the sinful natures of the flesh brings out. Again. Same calling, be different to the Lord, or be different to the world. Um, it's, it's basically giving you the opportunity that you don't have to allow Satan and sin to enter your life, right? We have an opportunity to say no flesh, no sin, because we have access to a life that, that Jesus gives us. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and you and money at the same time. It's pretty obvious there. We can't have two masters. The Lord is selfish in, in, in a sense that he wants all of you. He doesn't want you just to say, yes, Lord, you can have me, and then you go off and you do your own thing. I talk some guys in AA, and in AA, you, you have step three, where you give your will and your life over to the Lord. But so many people go through that, and then after that, they don't follow the steps in the sense of, of transforming what needs to happen in order for you to have that fullness of life. It's the same thing for the gospel. I mean, if you really want to get down to it, AA is, is a gospel-centered group, gospel-centered uh, program. But the purpose is, is it's not just, he doesn't want just, yes, Lord, you have my life. He wants everything that goes along with it. And that goes along with your day-to-day -day life. Um, in, this, in, in the second part of that, you can't serve two, two masters. I would say you replace, you can't serve God in money. You, you can replace money with anything. You can replace money with work, sex, drugs, alcohol, food, family. So many of those things are good. Work's good. Uh, I don't drugs are Work's good, um, food's good, family's good. But when those things become God, when those things are put up on a pedestal that are equal or greater than the Lord, 
then those become idols. And that's where we have to check ourselves. So when you read that, you know, it, it focuses on the money, but you can replace that with anything else. Um, you either live in the grace of the Lord and walk in that freedom, or you surrender yourself to the evil one and you live in sin. It's one or the other. Um, showing up on Monday night and doing this deal, but then walking out a different life throughout the week, you're playing the game. That's why I, that's why I like to tell people, I was playing the game. Hear me. And I, and I should have I should have said this at the beginning, but so much of this, um, I was kind of annoyed when Michael asked me to teach this lesson because it's like, this is the first lesson you want me to teach? <laughs> um, but man, like there's so much of this that, and, and, and I'll confess when we go through, but um, we're called to be different. And, and for me, I've had this life change, but there's still areas in my life that, I, that I'm, I'm letting just kind of go by. Oh, I don't really need to worry about that. It's not that big of a deal. You know, like, it's just for fun. Like, you know, what's the big deal? Because when I first heard this, there, I was, um, in my mind, I was like, there's so many, so much bigger things that I need to worry about, right? I can't stop drinking. I can't, my, my marriage is, is a mess. My, my work is, like, there's so many other bigger things that I need to focus on. Well, these things don't really matter that. They do matter because because for the reality is is Satan is a slippery snake he will get in there and he will kind of just slither in and kind of pick at little things and you'll kind of get complacent and you'll be like, you know what that's not that big a deal but he'll eat away at you and he eventually creates a hole and takes control Hosea 4 6 the passion and this is the passion translation in there our people are destroyed by the lack of revelation knowledge. We have a responsibility to tap into God's word and seek the knowledge from the Holy Spirit. As we have, I uh, hit on this later on too, but we have what we need to be victorious over our sin. There's no, there's no manual, besides that, there's, there's no manual that's going to be sufficient enough or more sufficient than the Holy Spirit in your life. That is something that I struggled with heavily for a while was, you know, I had all this knowledge. I wouldn't say it was revelational knowledge. I had knowledge of the Bible. Um, I had knowledge of that, that song that Jay Wood sung at the, the last song. Ooh, I've heard that song more times than I can count. But the Holy Spirit has changed my life in a way that I just heard that for the first time. And I was, I'm about to break down tears again. <clears throat> I was, I've been broken from that, man. Like that's, but that's the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does is you can have all this head knowledge of, of knowing what you need to do, but until you let the Holy Spirit do what it needs to do in your heart, it's, not, it's worthless. Um, again, you may think that these things don't hold power over you or that, these are small things or they're just for fun or but be careful because that's exactly what Satan wants you to believe. Those are lies from Satan that he's trying to manipulate, control you to make you think that these things aren't that big of a deal. Our culture is ruled by Satan in his evil ways. He hides in the shadows and whispers lies in, in order to make us compromise who we are called to be in Christ. So here's some examples. Um, you know, as we kind of go through these again, I, I picked, picked and choose some of the ones that Michael typically goes through. I decided to skip over some of the other ones. Um, but uh, again, these are areas, and the, I'm just going through some of these, but these are areas in which we need to check ourselves. Um, don't look at this, again, as a legalistic, um, nitpicky, shameful conversation. This is, this is an area... I believe that as I'm talking about this, I might not even mention something that the Holy Spirit is going to mention to you. Because as I'm going through this, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to tap in and say, hey, you need to check that. You need to look at that. So let's do it. Sex. Anything revolving around sex, physical participation outside the biblical marriage, porn, chat rooms, voyeurism, 
masturbation. I would even go as far as on Instagram, half naked girls popping up. I've had to get rid of so many stinking accounts for that. But anything revolving around sex, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. This is why you must keep running away from sexual immorality. For every other sin a person commits is external to the body. For immorality involves sinning against your own body. Have you forgotten that your body is now a sacred temple of the spirit of holiness who lives in you? You don't belong to yourself any longer. You, for the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside your sanctuary. You are God's expensive purchase, paid for with tears of blood. So by all means, then, use your body to bring glory to God. I mean, again, it's a passion translation. Man, I just, I got, wow. Um, you know, the world, it promotes sexual gratification. It's almost as if it's, you know, my, I've, uh, Michael shares this when he brings this, but, you know, I look at like the whole, you know, back in the biblical times, they would have their cults were all focused around some kind of sexual exploration, right? They would have orgies by their statues. It was a very almost public expression of how in which they entered into these cults. And and I believe that, that as, as culture has moved forward, Obviously, there's been a shift in how in which we practice those. I believe that now Satan has gotten smart because those things have been put away. But Satan has gotten smart and tricky in how in which we are okay with these things. So, so as we enter into sexual immorality, and it's not just talking about the physical, right? Of course, that is that is obvious. But it's talk, we're talking about porn, chat rooms. We're talking about just anything that you that that you revolves around sex Satan uses to pervert because sex again like I said earlier sex is a good thing it is called to be a good thing God created that to be a good thing in marriage anything outside of that it's sinful <clears throat> the world promotes gratification of these sins those who participate in these in these things welcome something that is not of the Lord um, but here's the good news there's forgiveness and healing. Yeah. We, hear, we, we use the ARC method here if you're new. It's you, you, you um, admit it, you renounce it, and you confess it. We'll have opportunities after we, we break to go to the group. And, and if you have experienced this and you have been involved in this, um, the Lord's asking you to admit that, renounce that, and confess that, that he's... He's sovereign over that. He's forgiven that. Um, and live in that. Um, alter mind states. Drugs, alcohol, psychedelic drugs, adrenaline, AI, virtual gaming. Um, it's pretty obvious, right? But 2 Timothy 4, 5. Be free from intoxication, in, uh, intoxicating influences. Keep a clear mind. You know, when I was going through this, I thought I was a heavy psychedelic user. And and for me, I think or I know the reason why that's the route I prefer to go was because my reality was one that I, I couldn't stand. I hated the reality I lived in. And so I tried to utilize these things to create my own reality and tap into a whole new world that I just... I would have freedom in, or so I thought. Um, but looking back on so many, I would say 90% of those trips, or whatever you want to call them, they were demonic influences all throughout. I mean, it was one of them put me in a cycle because it, I believe, you know, so many people think, oh, well, you enter into, you can tap into the spiritual woman. I, I think you can. But I don't think you tap into the right spiritual realm. I think you tap into the satanic spiritual realm. And and uh, once again, I mean that's a, I would say it's an obvious one, but even virtual gaming, guilty. You have, I have spent, Jay Wood can attest to this, so many hours playing a video game 
where I get in so immersed into it that I lose track of time. I, oh, I forget responsibilities. I, I, and in these games nowadays, you can have sex in these games. You kill people. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't want to play this, but Grand Theft Auto. You can go into strip clubs. You can, I mean, it's, you can live out fantasies in these games and be careful. Because although you're not physically doing it, you're spiritually doing it. You're allowing, it's just another access point that Satan can come in and say, hey, I got you. I got you. <coughs> Straws you in. Psychics, mediums, and spiritualists. Leviticus 19.31. Do not turn to mediums, necromancy. Nacr- 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 Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Um, I'm going to use this for Michael because, you know, it, it, spiritualists, mediums, psychics, they do have power. They do have authority. But again, just like I was talking about psychedelics, they only have authority and power from the dark realm. They only have authority and power from Satan and his demons. They do not have heavenly or spiritual power. So when you tap into those, once again, you're allowing access in a way that Satan is using to to tap into your heart and your mind. Um, um, Michael said this last time on pretty sure it's a verse but I, I don't he who is in us he who is in us is greater than he who's in the world I mean once again this is the theme of it of this of this talk is, is we have in us the power to fight against these crucifixes and crosses if you attribute any kind of supernatural power to an intimate objects you are participating in idolatry now i will say it is not i'm not saying and we're not saying that you're not allowed to have crosses you're not allowed to wear crosses on a ring around your neck but if you put a spiritual aspect and power into those objects that's idolatry because reality is you have the power in you you don't need something else to you know, in the movies, you see the priest hold up a cross and move somebody that's demonic. You know, so that that cross is what's keeping that demon from coming after them. I know it's a movie, but just go along with me. I mean, no, we have the power. Uh, Michael talked about um, uh, last year in recovery group talking about the different demons, right? And um, it's something I never really thought about was. You know, and I think he's talked about it here too, but but you have the power in you, power enough in you to be able to speak out loud and those demons have to flee. That, and there's no, I mean, I, I've used that so many times since then. I mean, it is, it's powerful. Um, I remember first time Don and, and um, George, they, when we bought a new house, they were like, we need to come over and we need to pray over your house. And, and I thought, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can pray right now. Um, but, but what they were saying is we need to step in. We need to speak it out loud because, and they believe at the time, at the time I kind of thought it was like kind of hocus pocus, but they believe that we have the power because we do have the power, right? Because of Jesus, we have the power and the Holy Spirit. We have the power to speak out loud. And those things have to leave. They have no room. Um, Having crosses all over your house to protect your house, to keep it more holy, is a superstition. Believing that you pray and read your Bible, go to church, come to exchange life, Nothing's bad that's going to happen to me. That's a superstition. It doesn't work that way. 
In this action, you've removed the power that we have in the, in the Holy Spirit. Psalms 18, 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. It's not a cross. It's not this building. It's the Holy Spirit. Horror and gruesome movies. Guilty. <laughs> Psalms 101.3 I refuse to gaze on that which is vulgar. I despise works of evil people and anything that moves my heart away from the Lord. I will not let evil hold me in its grip. When I was eight, maybe, um, you know, like I said, I grew up in Southern Baptist Church. I think around that age, we started boycotting Disney for some reason, so we had to get rid of all of our Disney movies. And, um, of course, I wasn't even allowed to watch PG-13 movies. Some night even PG movies. <coughs> so I went over to a friend's house, and he, his family was a big movie family. And that, like, they had a wall probably this size, and it was just covered in DVDs. And his older brother pulled out it. And we sit down, and again, I, the movies I was watching at that age were like Disney movies. So there was nothing anywhere close to this. And he puts in it, <clears throat> and oh my goodness, that movie rocked me. That movie rocked me to this day. To this day, if a clown were to walk into that room right now, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not kidding. I would I would run that way. I would tell Michael he can finish because I'm not staying. Here. It took root in my heart and in my life in a way that I didn't have access to stop it. That, and so I, I sit here and I think, okay, and I'm not saying... Because I know the Lord has, and, and I'm working through that right now. That's, that's a, whew. Clowns, demonic children, and dolls. I just, no, sir. Um, but it's crazy because, and I meant to ask you if this was okay. Um, when I was living with Jay Wood, although I'm petrified of those three, I, those three things I just listed, I can't, I just can't do them. I can't deal with them. I still enjoy the movie Saw. And if you're familiar with the movie Saw, they are the most gruesome, disgusting film you will ever see. And so I, I, I stand before you saying, again, as I'm going through this, I had to check myself, right? So if, if I'm called to live differently and live differently from the old loop, I'm called to live differently in every aspect of my life. And that is one that I can do. <sighs> Superstitions. Um, a stupid superstition is, a, is truly a, an attempt to control reality by something that is temporary. For me, my superstition, I'm a proud sooner. It's many years old. <laughs> And I have a super. I had a superstition. And I had this one T-shirt that I would make sure I wore for every single game, whether I was at the game or not, because I believed. Because we won so often that I just really thought it worked out. But I believed that this shirt had an influence on that game. What? How do I have anything to do with that? Because I don't. You know, it, it, superstitions are one of those things where. You know, how many times, and I've done this, how many times do I say, you know, Lord, if you do this, I'll do this. Lord, please save me in this moment, and I promise I'll never do this again. It doesn't work that way. Reading your Bible, I said it earlier, reading your Bible, listening to worship music, going to church, nothing bad will happen. Everything is already given to you now. It's up to you to enact the promises of God in order to obtain what the Lord has for you. Again, again, I'm, I'm circling the wagon on this multiple times because the reality is, is we have the power in us. We don't need external things. We don't need to tap into other things other than the Holy Spirit. 
added this one, social media. The world uses social media as a tool to establish your status in society. How, many, how often do we look at social media and we see, you know, now it's the, I'm not on Twitter, but, but you know, it's the, you got a blue check, they're official or something like that. I don't remember that. But rea reality is, is that until you get a certain amount of followers, until you get to a certain status, you, then you get the blue check. What? First off, social media is beyond fake. Let's be real. There's nobody posts about the bad things. Nobody posts about what isn't happening or what 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 is happening that is something that they don't want people to see. They only post what they want people to see. I said we only post what they want people to see. Last week I um, I hadn't posted on social media in like four years. And uh, there's obviously different reasons for that. One of which is I just, to, I didn't, I wasn't in a place or thought my life was worthy of that. But um, which right there just tells you what. I mean, come on. Um, but last week I posted um, a picture. I got to go to Dad's and, and Donuts with my daughter for Mother's Day out, um, which was man. Talk about thankful. Um, but. Had an incredible time, got great pictures. And so I posted last Thursday a picture of me and my daughter. And, um, and you know, by the end, of, you know, it, it got to the point where by the end of that day, I looked to see, you know, how many likes I had. And then I go to bed, I wake up the next morning. And what's the first thing I do? How many likes did I get? That moment with my daughter being where I had been and getting that opportunity to be there with her. It was priceless. <clears throat> but then now all of a sudden I'm focused on what people, how many hearts I have underneath the picture. What? It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Be careful. Don't allow social media and others to like something in order for you to feel enough. It's a slippery slope, and that's what Satan wants you to believe. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> Gifts given. Man, I'm just crying all over the place tonight. Um, if you've received anything from a, an ex, an old friend, um, anything like a picture or a necklace or shoes or a CD, I know they just dated me. Um, if any of those things bring up bad memories or bad feelings, you should probably get rid of it. There's a song <clears throat> that, and, and, and I don't know what the song is called, but. <clears throat> There's a song that um, I associate with my one of my, my ex-girlfriends, the Mitten, one of my longtime ex-girlfriends. And I remember that song came up last summer, and I started singing along with it. And I, and I started kind of reminiscing, right, going back to having those feelings, thinking about what had happened. And then I started thinking about how it went wrong negative feelings started coming and I caught myself in the moment and I thought about this. I was like, what am I doing? Like, no. I'm, and I turned it off. But to sit there and play with it and allow it to enter back in, especially if it, it, if it has bad feelings with it. Uh, Michael said that um, any item that carries influence of abuse, wickedness, or evil should be removed. Take it to the Lord. The Lord will tell you what to do. If it needs to be removed, he'll tell you what to do. Um, I'm going to kind of run through these. Because these aren't what I want to talk about. But, um, yoga. Uh, you know, uh, these are some of the ones that I thought, what in the world? 
you know, yoga, if you if you look at yogas are all sex positions if you didn't know that already. They are, they, the way in which they, they are created, it is all about a, what's the religion that we're going Hindu. Hindu, thank you. It is, it is, it revolves around that. And so you just, just be careful, right? And Michael said, uh, he said last time, you know, there's no such thing as Christian yoga. It doesn't exist. You just be careful. You want to talk to Michael about that more? You can talk to Michael about that more. <laughs> Meditation. Um, when I got out of treatment lot, two years ago now, um, I I got really into meditation. Because when you're in treatment, that's like the whole thing. Right there. It's all about meditation and you know, all these things. And, and so I, I downloaded this app and I used this app to fall asleep. So it was this guy that kind of just brought you through these steps and all these things. So when Michael taught about this first time, I was like, Are you telling me I can't meditate to fall asleep? And that's not what he's referring to. It's more of when you, just like when you are utilizing meditation to enter into a spiritual realm, right? When you are utilizing it to tap into something else other than Christ, that's when you need to be careful. Um, mass statues, carvings, um, there's just, there's a lot that goes into you know, Michael talks about dream catchers and the purpose of a dream catcher. The Indians would use it to, when they couldn't find animals and they couldn't find anything to hunt or harvest, they would take, they'd go out and they'd capture an animal and they'd take their, they'd take sticks and they'd make a circle and they'd take the, the guts and the parts of that animal and they'd create what we look at as a dream catcher now. And they would utilize that as a portal to Mother Nature to try to get information on where in which they need to go find animals and harvest things. So, so the original intent of that dream catcher was to tap into a demonic world. So you need to be careful with that, right? So you can take a dream catcher and you can make it all pretty and put fluffy flowers on it and whatever. The original purpose is the same thing. Same thing with masks, statues, carvings. When you, when you have something, it kind of goes back to the crosses, right? When you, when you attribute some kind of spiritual connection with that or give it any kind of spiritual significance that it has power, be careful. Zodiacs, zodiac signs, um, going to reading your, your um, what is it called? In the, thank you, horoscope. You have access to the Holy Spirit. Why do you need to go to the horoscope? Why do you need to tap into something else that's going to tell you, like Michael says, if you're getting that check in the mail or not? No, you you have the power you need. Enneagram, um, you know, telling you what kind of person you are and the type of person you connect with, and these are if you're this, then this is the spouse that you need. It's not biblical. Um, and like the, my favorite point that Michael makes is, you know, it, it talks about in the intro of it, basically saying that you know, this is the way you are and just deal with it. And like Michael says, no, I'm not going to accept that because I, I'm moving through by grace. And I'm moving towards glory. That means that I, if I'm moving towards glory, I'm not going to be the same person I was when I first started this. <coughs> So be careful with that. I'm going to close this. Sorry, I'm taking so long. Um, I've, I've, I think I've beat this enough, but what do we do with this? Um, the main theme of this is that we have the power in us to make that change. Colossians 1, 10 through 14. So as to walk in manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, may you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, don't miss this, who has qualified you to share in his inheritance of the saints in life. He has delivered us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins.
He desires to walk with us. He wants to walk with us. Our Heavenly Father desires nothing more than for us to walk in with Him. We are called to walk in a way that is pleasing to Him. And like I said earlier, we can't serve two gods. We can't go back and forth and have this, have it this way and have it another way. We, we are called to walk in the light. Just like it says, and that was, that was the one that hit me right there. Just like it says, you are qualified walk this out. For so long I thought there was no way the Lord is going to redeem me enough to qualify me to walk in glory. And like I shared about in group last week, you know, before I got help and before I started this journey, I was I was in a dark, dark place. I was suicidal and I thought the world, it was over for me. And um, part of that was I was, I believed that nothing was ever going to change. I was always going to keep doing the same thing. I was always going to kind of get better and fall way worse and, and I last week we were talking about vows and I had a I was saying vows to myself like you know there, I, I still have hardship right there's still things in my life that are not easy and I, I was telling myself <coughs> vows that again things aren't going to change but If you, like I said earlier, if you knew where I was April 2nd of last year, and I'm standing up here right now talking about this, what? We're qualified. Each and every single one of you are qualified. You just got to tap into that. Tap into that Holy Spirit. You know, one of the things that, that has changed my life in so many ways is Actually doing the work, which to me means getting after it and reading my Bible. Having time alone with the Lord that I just sit and I listen. And I dwell on things. And I tap into that Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, we have the power to overcome the dark spirits. And like I said, these are, these are examples, but... I just, I empower y'all. That's what I want to leave you with. You're qualified. You're qualified in every way. So tap into it.